Hey there YouTube. Today I have a video on the Turnigy Aerostar SRS flight control system. This is a three-axis aircraft gyro. I normally for my line of sight planes I don't bother with things like this but uh, I've got a couple of balsa planes that I like to fly around and every now and then it, it probably would be nice just to have a little bit of a safety net or if nothing else just some a little bit of help with the wind. You know how it gets a little windy out at the field sometimes. So it just so happened that Hobby King was selling these things for 11 bucks out of the East Warehouse. So I thought, what the heck, I'd try it. So I picked a couple of them up. I've already installed one in an airplane. I haven't flown it yet. That'll come soon, so that'll be an upcoming video. For today, this is just an in unboxing and an example on how to, how to install it and how I installed mine. So to start with, I've already opened the box and, and cut open the uh, wrappers just so... You don't have to worry about that on the screen. But here's what you get in the box. You get the flight controller and some cables and some double stick tape and a little screwdriver to adjust the pots and an instruction manual. What I'll tell you about the instruction manual, it's typical of what we've come to expect out of Hobby King. Um, the instructions aren't crystal clear. You probably are going to have to take your time reading them more than once. I know I did. Uh, but if you look at the wiring diagram, that's the most important part. And then this little table right here is the next most important part because it really kind of tells you what needs to happen on your radio. You'll get these instructions with the, with the box. And if uh, you really want to look at it closer, you can get a copy of them online if you just search for uh, the Aerostar SRS manual. So what I'll point out is that they're they kind of do things a little strangely. <laughs> there are there are two channels that you want to that you'll end up devoting on your radio to controlling this gyro. One is called emergency, and the other is called aux. Now the aux channel sets the flight mode, and the emergency channel is I guess on some of the uh, aircraft that come from the factory with stabilizers they have like a chicken switch that does an automatic recovery. That's what the emergency mode does, and they recommend you put that on a momentary switch. Uh, they, uh, they call it a rebound toggle. So uh, I'm not too worried about the emergency mode. I connected it just to see what it would do, and I put it on, I don't know, one of my three position switches. But well, So with the cables, you get three extensions. These will be for your aileron, elevator, and rudder. Actually, check that. It'll be for emergency, elevator, and if you have a right aileron, you'd use it there. I don't. The airplane I put it on has a Y cable connecting to ailerons, so I didn't need that one for mine. This third cable is the special one, and you can see it's got, it, they broke out individual leads, and basically they're using them for signal off of this slot on the bottom called multi. So the way you'll connect this to the plane is you connect the three prong plug to the multi switch. See, three leads on that one. And then your aileron, or sorry, your elevator and emergency. Now what this will get you is a traditional four channel airplane because this multi line, this multi cable, the one they split, it is good for, yellow is for aileron, the orange is for rudder, and the brown is for your aux switch. So when you plug this into the receiver, you'll plug this one into your aileron channel on your receiver, this one will go into your rudder channel, and this will go into a devoted channel for flipping the flight modes. And then emergency, oh sorry, then here's your elevator. And then the emergency cable goes into another channel. So in my case, I have one, two, three, four, that's aileron, elevator, rudder, throttle. And for the emergency mode and the aux, aux switch, that would be channels five and six. So another thing they recommend in the guide is using a three position switch, a two or three position switch for the aux connection. Uh, I did that right out of the gate, but they also say in the directions that the aux 
let's see, it says the travel of the aux channel also controls the master gain of the SRS. So with that in mind, I decided to go ahead and use a gain knob instead, or a rotary knob instead for gain, just like I do on the vector. And the theory is that if I'm greater than zero, and depending, there's, there are a couple of different modes, but if you're greater than zero, that would be what they call promotion mode. And if I'm less than zero, that would be called expert mode. And the higher you are north of zero, the greater the gain for that promotion mode. And the lower you are, closer to negative 100, the higher the gain would be for expert mode. So, and you can only have one, one or the other. You can't run them both at the same time. And I'll go through the modes real quick. There's a beginner mode that says, this one says, aileron does auto level. The roll angle is limited to 75 degrees. When the aileron stick is back to center, the aileron will keep the level automatically. So I assume that means that it keeps the, the, let, the longitudinal axis level automatically. The elevator will be controlled by yourself. There is no auto level function, but will obvious assist or provide obvious assist. So not exactly sure what that means. I didn't bother with it because I'm not a beginner. So um, I do think the idea with that is to basically keep the plane pretty flat. Although there's no attitude locking, so it won't keep an attitude that you set. Practice mode, this one invokes attitude locking. So attitude locking for roll, pitch, and yaw. Restriction on roll and pitch speed. So I guess that just means you can only gradually maneuver. And by the way, in order to get these modes set, you have to use the dip switches, these guys right here on, on, the, uh, on the gyro. So the dip switch explanation says, if you're a beginner, put the T-switch to the right. And when you do that, what that means is you're going to have access to beginner mode and practicing mode. All right, so the T-switch is on the right-hand side. The, the T-toggle is on the right-hand side. If the T-toggle is on the left-hand side, that means you get access to promotion or expert. So while there are four different modes, you can only run two of the designated modes and an off mode. Those are the only options you have. So the way I set mine up is I left my T to the left. I'll use promotion and expert and off. When my rotary knob is at zero, it's off. There's no stabilization help at all. When my rotary knob is to the right, I get promotion mode. And when it's to the left, I get expert mode. And then they explain the lead status that you'll see in each of those modes. In my case, promotion mode gives me fast flash. And expert mode is basically, it says forever on, but that means solid. And then if it's off, if there's no stabilization, then the lead is off by itself. Okay? So... That's basically the wiring. Now, I'm not going to go through the wiring install, but I will show you what it looks like in the plane. The last thing I'll cover before we get into the airplane are setting these gain switches. And the way they describe it is if you're max counterclockwise, so, so you have to look at this as with noon delineation between the servo tr direction of travel. So while you're adjusting or setting the stabilizer up, if you realize that your aileron is going the wrong way, then you're on the wrong side of zero. So for example, if I were to take this screwdriver and turn the aileron all the way to the right, that means I'm at 100% gain and the aileron will operate in a given direction. If I flip it all the way clockwise, all the way around to the other side, I'm also at 100% gain, but the servo is reversed. That's how that works. And then there's one other mode for emergency, and the emergency mode says if when you flip the emergency mode switch, the elevator will go up quickly and then return to level slowly. If that's not the case, you have to calibrate the direction of your radio sticks. I did have to do this on mine, so the instructions are pretty easy. Uh, basically, put the D and V switches on the right, put the T and Y switches on the left, no problem with that. Power on the radio, wait until the aerostar flashes slowly, and then move both sticks to the lower left corner. And they give you a little diagram. When I did that, um, then you turn the power off after the lead goes off, uh, then the emergency mode actually behaved the way it's supposed to. So there's two kinds of servo direction controls you need with this setup. One is in the emergency for the emergency mode, and you can test that by flipping the emergency mode switch. What should happen is the elevator should snap up and then gently go back down to level. If it doesn't, 
you have to do this stick calibration. Okay, for basic stabilization, you control the servo direction by being on either the left side of zero or the right side of zero, and then the amount past zero that you go determines the amount of gain, or the basic gain. Don't forget, the way I set mine up, the rotary knob is the master gain, so that's a multiplier that will also increase the amount of throw that the gyro puts out based on conditions. Okay, I'm going to take a pause here, get the airplanes out and plugged in, and, and I'll show you what the airplane looks like, and then we'll take a look at the radio setup. Okay, so here's the airplane. I've got the gyro stabilizer in there. I just powered the plane on, and there you just saw it did a little elevator dance. That lets you know that the unit is initialized, and you can see that the LED is blinking quickly. So what that means is I have this, this is in promotion mode. Um, this is the mode, what, promo, I'll go, pr what promotion mode does is it does attitude locking for roll, pitch, and yaw. And what I, the only thing I can assume by that is, is that if I put it into a bank, it should keep the bank. Uh, versus beginner mode, which when you let go of the sticks, it's going to come back to center. Uh, expert mode is simple gyro correction. It's uh, basically gyro correction and anti-wind function. That's how the directions describe it. So I don't think that'll do any kind of holding at all. It'll just help you correct for wind. And that's one of the main reasons I wanted this, this flight controller. Okay. So the wiring, again, I, I kind of, this is why I wasn't going to go through showing you how to wire it. I, I did the unit that I had outside the airplane because it's all kind of tucked in and, and tucked away. But what I will show you is the control surface movement and let you get a look at what that looks like. So I've got my gain knob turned all the way up right now. And the surface that I found easiest to demonstrate is the rudder. So if you look at the rudder, you can see when I yaw the airplane to the right, the rudder moves to the left. You see that? And when I move the aircraft to the left, the rudder moves to the right. So that, that's, the, that's the one mode that I thought was really easy to see. The ailerons are a little bit harder to see when you turn it. They are moving up. I don't know if you can see that up aileron or not, but it is up. If I roll it this way, the aileron is down, and that is correct for a stabilizer. You basically, what, it's, what you have to imagine go, is, that's going on is when you're flying and you make a movement, if you want that aircraft to return to center, the way it's got to do that is by putting the other aileron up. That'll cause the airplane to come back to center. And when they do that, the ailerons read level. They go back to their center position. Um, the elevator, I, I don't know if you can see the movement on the elevator or not. I, I can see it, but I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up. But as I pitch down, the elevator goes up. The idea behind that is that if I'm descending, and I don't want to, you want the stabilizer to use up elevator to re-level the aircraft. The same thing happens if I, if I pitch up, then the elevator moves down. All right, so that's pretty basic stuff for any stabilizer. They all work kind of the same way, and, and it took me a little bit of trial and error with the pots to make sure I had the pots going in the right direction, um, but that's that. So the next thing I'll show you real quick is the emergency mode. I'm just gonna toggle my I'll toggle my, let me move, adjust the camera here. I'll toggle the emergency switch, keep an eye on the elevator in the back. So it goes up and then gradually goes back to a down position. So take it out of, out of emergency mode and we're back to level. So emergency mode one more time, elevator goes up and then back down to a level position. All right, that's emergency mode and I think that's really intended to get you out of trouble. And I'm sure it will adjust the ailerons as well, but that's going to be too hard to demonstrate on video. Okay, so that's the stabilizer function in the plane. Next thing I'll do is pull the radio out, and I'll show you how I set up the radio. Okay, so here we are in the radio. I'm going to go ahead and click into the setup for the Millennium Master. And we'll go into the mixer. So in the mixer, you can see that I set up S2, which is my rotary knob on the right to be the controller that's on channel 5 for selecting promotion mode or expert mode. Basically, it, puts, it selects the flight mode of the, of the gyro. And here's what that configuration looks like. It's real simple. You just basically add source S2 with a weight of 100. That's it. That's all you have to do. And when you do that, what ends up happening is the zero spot, and I'll, let me pull the, let me plug the plane in and I'll, I'll 
pull it over and see if we can get a look at what it looks like. So it'll just take a minute to bind. All right, there it goes. Okay. So right now I've got my S2 pot in the zero position. That's, that's centered. And you can see that the controller is off. So now what I'm going to do is rotate the S2 pot to the right. That should give me promotion mode, which is a flash, a flashing LED. So there you go. As soon as I go off a of zero, right there I'm off a of zero, I get the flashing LED. When I go back to zero, it's off. So no stabilization. You look at the aircraft move around, nothing, nothing, no stabilization at all. Now when I move it to the left, you'll see I get a solid LED on the SRS. That's the expert mode. That's just gyro correction. That's all it is. Gyro and wind correction. So when you move the rudder, or when you yaw the aircraft, the rudder actually moves back to its center position. So this is just wind, re wind rejection or gyro stabilization. That's it. Okay. Uh, now the last thing to show you is the emergency mode, and that's a real simple switch as well. I put that one on SD, SD down and it's just a weight of 100 with no offset. So again, real simple, and I'll show you when I flip the switch what, what happens. I click down, and the elevator goes up, and then back down to a neutral position. That's it. And you can see I get a slow blinking LED on the SRS. That indicates emergency mode. All right? So that's it. That's the setup. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll take this thing out and fly it, and we'll take a look and see how it does in the air. The reason I picked my Millennium Master, this is my old, I call it my pickup truck. I've got a lot of flight time on this plane. I'm very comfortable with it. I know its flight characteristics, so I figured this would be the safest one to try it out on. I've got a Warbird on the way, and I've got some Balsa planes. And if this thing works out the way I think it's going to, it's probably uh, something I'll wind up putting in most of my planes, at least, at least the ones I care about a lot. Because... Uh, it's just nice after flying FPV with full-fledged computers like the Vector. It's just nice to have a little bit of stabilization help. It's not that, not that I would suggest learning how to fly like this. You should learn how to fly without any help at all as far as I'm concerned. But once you've got that down, um, these kinds of tools are really nice to minimize pilot workload and just make the experience a little better and give you a, more, a bigger window of opportunity to fly. I can't count how many times I've been at the field and seen guys not flying because the winds are just too strong. So this would be a nice little upgrade to an airplane to let you fly when it's maybe a little less than ideal. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video, and if it has been helpful, please, I, I would appreciate it if you could hit subscribe and like and even comment. Uh, I appreciate your feedback. Take care.